We're hours away from the Monaco Grand Prix. Teams updating their cars to work for such a specific track where max downforce is required. We're going to see different rear wings on every single car, different cooling patterns. We're going to look a little bit into the front brake ducts and talk about some necessary switches teams have made, some of the lower end teams to hopefully make their way up. Aston has also brought something that could be crucial for their weekend. If you guys do enjoy these videos and in general the channel, I would love if you've subscribed if you're new here. It would mean the world to me and the support on the channel is absolutely ridiculous. So thank you so much for sticking around, being with me, commenting, liking, and just in general supporting the channel. It makes me happy to do this and make great content for you guys. So let's get into the upgrades for this weekend. Let's start off with the rear wings as per usual. We're gonna start off with Red Bull, Ferrari, McLaren, and Aston Martin. And these are all different rear wings that we have not seen on these cars at all in this season. And that is because we are in Monaco. So obviously it's gonna be max downforce for every single wing, but let's go over what has changed. Now with the Red Bull wing, as you look, the rear edge in the wing has changed that cutout and obviously that upper plane and the lower plane that we can't really see in this picture is much bigger than we typically see on this car. They usually run a medium downforce rear wing. They don't even bring that many of them typically in the season because they're so confident in what the floor provides for that car. But for Monaco, it's a necessity to have a big rear wing that provides maximum downforce and gives you a good DRS effectiveness on that little straight that we have because it can add some time, believe it or not, in qualifying. For Ferrari, they also have a new rear wing that we will actually look at a little bit more. But from this angle, you can also see how much higher that upper plane is and you can see how much deeper the lower plane is to its typical medium downforce rear wing. Now, as for the McLaren, they have the beautiful Senna livery that they're running. And this rear wing is new to it as well. A little bit of change in that rear corner edge. But we also see in the middle, they've still kept what they had on their lower downforce rear wing, but the lower and the upper plane is bigger. Aston Martin also has a new rear wing. It's still very similar to what we've seen, but the lower plane is deeper and the higher plane is also bigger as well which is a typical trend here in Monaco to get the maximum out of the downforce, but also the DRS effectiveness. Looking at the next four teams, we have Williams, Mercedes, Alpine, and Racing Bulls. And obviously, just like the past four, it's gonna be maximum downforce. Williams has the most simplistic wing. That rear corner edge seems very simple and not as defined and skinny like the Mercedes. When I looked at the Mercedes rear wing, I automatically thought it was off of the W14, but it's not. It's actually revised in that rear wing edge, which we've already seen, but that lower plane is much more different than it was on the barn door W14. So this is a completely different wing for Monaco. They have a lot more trust in the car. Hopefully the floor is generating a lot more power than it was before, so they don't have to go as excessive on that maximum load. But it's nice to see a different high downforce rear wing because we've seen the same continuous one for the past pretty much three years up until W15. Now looking at the Alpine, it's another maximum rear downforce wing. And the only one that kind of looks off to me, at least from this angle, is the Racing Bulls one. They do have a upgrade here that could prove to be a lot of gain in time if they get the most out of it. I don't think they will, but we'll go over it in a little bit. As for rear wings, it's the fourth one they've already brought this year within the last eight races. So They've definitely been working on that perfect setup for the car. This is new and higher downforce because we can see with the upper and the lower plane that it's much bigger to that of before. I do also have a shot of the Sabaru wing and it is a pretty chunky boy for the maximum downforce that it needs here. We don't have a pick of the Haas car, unfortunately, but as expected with all these teams, it's gonna be maximum downforce, pretty much the same thing with these rear corner edges and a lot of load in the upper and the lower plane for maximum DRS effectiveness. We're gonna look at V-Carb first. What have they brought here and why is this such a major change? So looking at these pictures, you're gonna be like, oh, well, what is the upgrade here? It is in the brake discs. And you can see the change between these brakes. The bottom one is the new one. The top one is the older one. Now, why this can be super beneficial. They changed from what they were using before to what now Red Bull is using. Now the drawback is this weighs more. This new brake disc that they're using weighs a lot more to the previous one, but you can get more performance out of it and the cooling is much easier on brakes like this than it was on the previous ones. We know they struggled in 22 and 23 on brakes. 
this could prove very beneficial for them. Them trying it on Monaco could be very difficult to get into that perfect window. They're going to have to learn this, especially with their suspension setup. They do have obviously the RB19 suspension in the front and the back. But it could be a big time gain if they get it down. It could really help Ricardo. We know he's been very tricky on the brakes since he's been here in this Alpha Tauri slash V-Carb team. And this could prove beneficial. And there also is more cooling now added into the brake ducts. If we look, you can see how the previous one was and how this one is from Monaco. Just slight variations. Every team is going to have it like that. But with that being said, though, I do want to look at also the Sauber's brake ducts. You can see how much cooling is going through this car and out through the back as well. They're very focused on cooling in the brakes. They've also had issues there as well. Braking for the teams that are down towards the bottom is very important and it seems like these teams never end up getting on top of this. That's why Red Bull and Ferrari and Mercedes and McLaren are always so much more successful in this avenue. It seems like the experience of the top teams is always a little bit ahead of the bottom teams when it comes to brake cooling, how to be better on the brakes, and being efficient with its performance. Now looking at some of the upgrades. Now the first team we're going to look at is Ferrari. What have they brought here? Why can this be crucial for the team? Now, as I said, most of these upgrades are going to be track specific, as you say, but they add a lot of performance on a track like Monaco where it's necessary to have this. So looking at this rear wing from Imola to Monaco, you can see the variation and change in the upper and the lower plane to get that maximum downforce. Even with the rear corner edging, how it is done in the previous one in Imola, you can see that it's pushing more outwards while in the Monaco one, it's a little more inwards towards that rear corner. Now they've also paired this up with a new beam wing to add more downforce towards the back of the car. Not as much priority on getting the most out of their DRS because on a track like this, it's downforce that's key. They have also brought an upgrade to their DRS activator. That's something that's internal mechanical. We're not going to see a visual update to that, but it could help them in sector one. It could add a little bit of time, but that is where they were missing most of their time in Imola in sector one and lost out to both the Red Bull and the McLaren. So we're gonna see this upgrade and we're gonna see how much more it proves to be worth in the upcoming races, not really here in Monaco. Also with the Ferrari, we're gonna see two different versions on this car. We could see the front wing without the gurney flap or with the gurney flap. Gurney flaps both on the rear wing and the front wing are gonna be tried out here to see what is better. This just adds a little bit more downforce, that little flap that you see. It could be that little bit of gain they need on both the front or the rear part of the car. It's very driver dependent. Teams make these decisions after a couple of practice sessions, so we'll see variations between the front and the rear wing gurney flaps. Now, Aston Martin is also trialing something here, as I've said. With their front wing, they brought a completely different revised front wing in Imola, and the car seemed to have been very unstable, but they say they've gained performance. So for Monaco, they've brought back this front wing. We have a very positive Alonso in the news, which makes me quite happy. Don't know whether it's going to actually truthfully become like that or not, but he is very positive and says they can have a great weekend with a couple of changes. The front wing itself gave them a little bit of a better balance. Could they bring back that front wing variation? I think they could, but I think for Monaco, balance is much more important than gaining a little bit of time because downforce here is the main thing you need. They've been really good in qualifying. I'm hopeful, but we'll have to see what they go with here. I've not seen the new front wing here at all, except for this old spec, which will be used here, and Alonso has confirmed that. Will they trial between the two? That I'm not sure. We'll have to see throughout the practices. The cooling is another thing that could be very important here for Monaco. It really depends on the weather, but considering we're going to get a rainy quali, at least that is right now the prediction in the weather forecast, we're going to see these cooling grates closed. It's pretty ridiculous looking at this McLaren. It almost reminds me of the Haas from Mexico. And this cooling is pretty much opened up for a Mexico type of GP. We're not going to see it to this variation. Red Bull also has all their cooling grates open as well, but expect those gills to be closed up, if any, on the car. Ferrari already had it that way, but with Red Bull and McLaren, do not expect this for the Grand Prix. These are just the pre-pictures before going into our Grand Prix weekend. That's really going to do it for Monaco. It's mainly rear wings, front wings, gurney flaps, as I said, higher downforce upgrades to help out the team, mainly track specific, but it's going to make for a very interesting weekend where qualifying matters so much. It's going to be rain. So I expect to see all these gurney flaps on these cars and the max, max downforce you can get. 
especially because the rain is coming and qualifying. We don't know for the race. It says it's going to be dry. Said that last year, we ended up getting rain. So you never know with Monaco. We could be in for a very unpredictable weekend, which is what I'm expecting. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like, subscribe. It would mean the world. And peace.